right, all right. It is June tenth. June tenth. June tenth. June tenth. And it is eleven twenty in the morning. It's so weird saying morning when it's like eleven o'clock. I feel like after ten, ten, yeah, after ten o'clock is weird saying morning. There should be like a new name for that time between morning and yeah, from ten to twelve. There should be a different name for it. I don't know what you would call it, but it doesn't feel like morning. Or should I, should I say from ten nine fifty nine to eleven fifty nine a.m. Anyway, I'm gonna. I I'm waiting on this food. It's a one young lady working by herself in there at this Pepper Jacks Grill. I feel bad for her. It's gonna be a minute. I could tell there was a line, and I was tempted to cancel the order, but I was like, you know what? We about to just wait. We about to be patient. That was like the first thing this lady said to me as I was walking up these steps. She was coming down as I was going up, and. And she was like, you can go on, come on. She saw all the food I had in my hand. She's like, you can go on, come on up. I'm in no rush, not especially on a day like this. I was like, yeah, it's a beautiful day. And uh, just being patient. Interesting. She has her smartwatch on her right wrist. I wonder why. I don't understand. Pete. Maybe she's right-handed. I mean, maybe she's left-handed. I'm curious if all people who are right-handed wear their smartwatch on their le- or their watch in general on their left wrist, like me. Um, I said I was going to get right into the scripture, but uh, it's not working out right now. All right, anything else I need to say? Get off my chest, off this bird chest with a few sprinkles of hair. Nah, we good, we good. If I say anything else, I'll start talking crazy. Man, everybody and mom is at UPS today. There's a UPS right next door. And there's a lot of people in line. It's so funny when you see older guys have a briefcase. <laughs> ah, that's how I know I've officially made it in life when I carry a briefcase around everywhere I go. Alright, let's see here. And not just any briefcase, like a really nice one. All right, dedication of the priest, Exodus 29. This is the ceremony you must follow when you consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priest. Take a young bull and two rams with no defects. Then using choice wheat flour and no yeast, make loaves of bread, thin cakes mixed with olive oil and wafers spread with, spread with oil. Place them all in a single basket and present them at the entrance of the tabernacle along with the young bull and the two rams. Present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water. Dress Aaron in his priestly garments, the tunic, the robe worn with the ephod, the ephod itself, and the chest piece. Then wrap the decorative sash of the ephod around him. Place the turban on his head and fasten the sacred medallion to the turban. Then anoint him by pouring the anointing oil over his head. Next, present his sons and dress them in their tunics. Wrap the sashes around the waist of Aaron and his sons and put their special head coverings on them. Then the right to the priesthood will be theirs by law forever. In this way, you will ordain Aaron and his sons. Interesting. Verse 10. Bring the young bull to the entrance of the tabernacle where Aaron and his sons will lay their hands on its head. Then slaughter the bull in the Lord's presence at the entrance of the tabernacle. Put some of his blood on the horns of the altar with your finger and pour out the rest at the base of the altar. Interesting. Take all the fat around the internal organs, the long robe of the liver, the long lobe of the of the liver and the two kidneys and the fat around them and burn it all on the altar. My dad eat, used to eat liver. I've never had liver. Then take the rest of the bull, including its hide, meat, and dung, and burn it outside the camp as a sin offering. Next, Aaron and his sons must lay their hands on the head of one of the rams. Then slaughter the ram and splatter its blood against all sides of the altar. Sounds really messy. Cut the ram into pieces and wash off the internal organs of the legs. Set them alongside the head and the other pieces of the body. Then burn the entire animal on the altar. This is a burnt offering to the Lord. It is a pleasing aroma, a special gift presented to the Lord. 
I love that phrase. Every time I see a pleasing aroma, I just imagine God just like smacking his lips and like breathing in the barbecue. Like we need to smell some good barbecue. Like, because as far as I know, God doesn't have to eat food. So it's like this is the closest thing he gets to like experiencing like all the senses that we have. Because we're made in the image of God. And you know, we love food. I wonder if God eats. He got to eat. Somehow, I don't know. Interesting. I don't know why God, it always says in here, like it was a pleasing aroma to him. Verse 19. Now take the other oh, ram and have Aaron and his sons lay their hands on his head, then slaughter it and apply some of his blood to the right earlobes of Aaron and his sons. Also put it on the thumbs of their right hands and the big toes of their right feet. Why the big toe? And why the right? Oh, yeah, the right, the right hand, the righteous right. And it's something about the right side. That is righteous. It's stronger than God. I mean, not stronger than God. It's the it's the strong side of God. I don't know why it's that way, but the Bible constantly says the right side. We're seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll uphold us with his righteous right hand. We've seen that already many times before. Um, I have a theory, yeah, that's why we're all right. Most of us are right-handed. Uh yeah. And it's our dominant hand. <clears throat> Why on the thumb, though? And why the big toe? Interesting. Splatter the rest of the blood against all sides of the altar. Then take some of the blood from the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his sons and on their garments. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Like, looking at all these people going to UPS with their packages. Focus, Aaron. Focus. In this way, they and their garments will be set apart as holy. Since this is the ram for the ordination of Aaron and his sons, take the fat of the ram, including the fat of the broad tail, the fat around the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys and the fat around them, along with their right thigh. Then take one round loaf of bread, one thin cake mixed with olive oil, and one wafer from the basket of bread without yeast that was placed in the Lord's presence. Put all these in the hands of Aaron and his sons to be lifted up as a special offering to the Lord. Afterward, take the various breads from their hands and burn them on the altar along with the burnt offering. It is a pleasing aroma to the Lord, a special gift for him. Then take the breast of Aaron's ordination ram and lift it up in the Lord's presence as a special offering to him. Then keep it as your own portion. Set aside the portions of the the ordination ram that belong to Aaron and his sons. This includes... This includes the breast and the thigh that were lifted up before the Lord as a special offering. In the future, whenever the people of Israel lift up a peace offering, a portion of it must be set aside for Aaron and his descendants. This is their permanent right, and it is a sacred offering from the Israelites to the Lord. Aaron's sacred garments must be preserved for his descendants who succeed him, and they will wear them when they are anointed and ordained. The descendants who succeeds him, the descendant who succeeds him as high priest will wear these clothes for seven days as he ministers in the tabernacle in the holy place. Take the ram used in the ordination ceremony and boil its meat in a sacred place. Then Aaron and his sons will eat this meat along with the bread in the basket at the tabernacle entrance. They alone may eat the meat and bread used for their purification in the ordination ceremony. No one else may eat them, for these things are set apart and holy. If any other ordination meat or bread remains until the morning, it must be burned. It may not be eaten, for it is holy. This is how you will ordain this is how you will ordain Aaron and his sons to their offices. Just as I have commanded you, the ordination just as I have commanded you. Man, I'm struggling. The ordination ceremony will go on for seven days. Each day you must sacrifice a young bull as a sin offering to purify them, making them right with the Lord. Afterward, cleanse the altar by purifying purifying it. Make it holy by anointing it with oil. Purify the altar and consecrate it every day for seven days. After that, the altar will be absolutely holy, and whatever touches it will become holy. Wow. These are the sacrifices you are to offer regularly on the altar. Each day, offer two lambs that are a year old, one in the morning and the other in the evening. With one of them, offer two quarts of choice flour mixed with one quart of pure oil of pressed olives. Also, offer one quart of wine as a liquid offering. This sounds like a recipe book. 
Offer the other lamb in the evening along with the same offerings of flour and wine as in the morning. It will be a pleasing aroma, a special gift presented to the Lord. These burnt offerings are to be made each day from generation to generation. After them in the Lord's presence at the tabernacle entrance, there I will meet you and speak with you. I will meet the people of Israel there in a place made holy by my glorious presence. Yes, I will consecrate the tabernacle and the altar, and I will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Then I will live among the people of Israel and be their God, and they will know that I am their Lord. I am the Lord their God. I am the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that I could live among them. I am the Lord their God. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord, that you are constantly speaking to us. I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to go through all this. I keep saying it. It was beautiful, like looking, listening to this, this imagery, I can imagine, even though some of that bloodiness was pretty, probably gory, all the animals, and yeah, Peter folks would probably not like that part, but yeah, um, yeah, God, something about the fact that we don't have to go through all this, every time I read these scriptures, I'm just thankful that we don't have to go through this, and that we can experience your joy, your freedom, your peace, and um, your presence every day through your Holy Spirit. And one day we'll stand with you face to face and embrace you forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And just be in your presence, like actually see you, actually see you, God. I look forward to that day. I thank you that this is the day that you have made. We can rejoice and be glad in it. For those that don't know you, I pray that they would uh, place their trust and their hope in you, that they would lay down their all their fears, all their worries, all their personal pride, and, and just give you all their questions, God, their wonderings, their wanderings. They'll just give their life over to you and ask you, your son Jesus, into their heart so they can have a right relationship with you for eternity in jesus mighty name i pray yes continue to order my steps as i go throughout today man i got cut off as i unplug my phone about to go and get this food yes pray for these people making this food give them a break and uh yeah give them a raise too uh all right thank you for the raise i got from dd anything else no that's all i got in jesus mighty name i pray amen Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes. I got money on my